Hello fellow humans, I am trying a new format for videos to break the pattern on this channel. I am calling this segment Degrowthify. It will be about quick updates, commentary, news, musings from a post-capitalist degrowth perspective. If you are new to this channel, this is what I mean by degrowth. Please give the channel a sub so we can tame the algo. I will also continue with my longer video essays, more loaded with graphic elements, so expect those as well. Also, please drop in the comments below suggestions for topics, books, articles that I should address in this new segment. For Degrowthify number one, I will talk about the new book by Yanis Varoufakis, Techno-Feudalism, What Killed Capitalism. The book is making the extraordinary claim that we no longer live in capitalism. With extraordinary claims, we should expect extraordinary evidence. Varoufakis writes, What has happened over the last two decades is that profit and markets have been evicted from the epicenter of our economic and social system, pushed out to its margins and replaced. With what? Markets, the medium of capitalism, have been replaced by digital trading platforms, which look like, but are not, markets and are better understood as fiefdoms. And profit, the engine of capitalism, has been replaced with its feudal predecessor, rent. Specifically, it is a form of rent that must be paid for access to those platforms and to the cloud more broadly. I call it cloud rent. In other words, not only did we as a society have not advanced into a better economic system, but this post-capitalism, which Varoufakis calls techno-feudalism, is a step backwards into the past, into a version of feudalism where the new lords are the CEOs and owners of big tech companies. Techno-feudalism is way worse than capitalism because when we use platforms, Amazon, Facebook, TikTok, we are no longer on a market where humans freely exchange goods and services. The platforms are entirely owned and controlled by these tech corporations. They set the rules. They set the fees. They decide which products or posts we can see. They show us what to buy. We still have capital, but no more capitalism. Then we have the so-called cloud proles, like the Amazon Mechanical Turk, which are waged workers pushed to their physical limits by algorithms, paid almost nothing to work virtually to grow the cloud capital of these corporations. Next, we have the cloud serves, like you and me and everybody else who feeds content into these platforms. Stories on Facebook, videos on TikTok, on YouTube, insults on X, reviews on Amazon, location on Google Maps, for free. We boost their cloud capital for free, while they pay their employees less than 1% of their revenues. We help cloud capital reproduce itself for the benefit of its owners, while our life is not getting better from the apparent comfort and convenience of using these platforms for free. As you guessed by now, nothing is really free to consume in techno-feudalism. Next, we have cloud fiefdoms, according to Varoufakis, that have replaced normal markets. Amazon is not a market because sellers would have to beat the algorithm to meet buyers, and buyers can only find sellers that come up in the search, also decided by the algorithm. There's no free, unfiltered flow of information as on a regular market. The algorithm is the lord, much like the medieval lords. What is even worse, in techno-feudalism, the owners of capital, also known as the cloudalists, do not even need to rely on profit to survive and grow. They base their supremacy on cloud rent, which are the fees paid by other capitalists to access their platforms. 30% ground rent to Apple to be on their Apple Store. This much to sell on Amazon. This much to advertise on Facebook or YouTube. This fee to be on Uber, Lyft, Grubhub, DoorDash, Instacart, PayPal and other copycats from Asia and Africa. Rent is a very perverse concept because it is a form of income that is unabashedly, shamelessly greedy. 
Ren has turned greed into an official accepted institution that we have no choice but to pay. In technofuelism, Ren has replaced profit as the core driver of growth. You may say, yeah, but these companies deserve to collect rent because they risked investments and nobody forces us to pay them rent or to use their platforms. Is that really true though? Can you imagine disconnecting completely from all cloud platforms and live completely off the grid? You and me as cloud serves, we don't pay the cloud rent, but we grow the cloud capital. Rent is paid by the so-called vassal capitalists and other business people who want to use the cloud platforms to make a business or to make a living. There are almost no alternatives in this economy, so that is why technofuelism has killed capitalism, according to Varoufakis. What does Varoufakis suggest we should do? Among other things, we should democratize companies, democratize money, Cloud and land must become commons. We should engage in cloud rebellion, cloud mobilization, with minimal personal sacrifice delivering large collective and personal gains, payment strikes, and so on. In other words, all businesses should be organized around the principle of one worker equals one vote equals one share. We phase out the stock market and we phase out the labor market. All citizens will have a bank account in a digital currency with the central bank. We phase out the private banks. Cloud capital will become owned by the society and all personal data will be owned by the individual and so on. Reality check. Let us see how technofuelism passes the test of reality. First, I will flex my cerebral muscles and attempt an off-the-cuff definition of capitalism. Capitalism is an economic system where the game of survival and supremacy is driven by the implacable bond and dependency between property, power and capital inside an organism that has the endless imperative to grow at its core. Having this in mind, here is reality check number one. Technofeudalism is a symptom of capitalism, but it has not replaced capitalism. It is only a new disease of the same organism. A cancerous disease, yes, but still a cog in the system. Can the disease destroy the entire organism? Probably yes, but only if it manages to completely transform the triad. If we look at all tech companies by revenue, they only amass around $5.5 trillion per year, compared to a global GDP of around 100 trillion. We can then probably say that cloud capital has an economic footprint of only 5% in the global economy in terms of revenue, even though it feels like it has taken over our lives completely. Culturally, that may be the case. However, economically, in terms of revenue, cloud capital is not as big as Varoufakis may indicate. Reality check number two is that tech companies are still structured according to the triad definition of capitalism. Property over platforms gives the power to set rules and algorithms by using the content of cloud capital. These three elements still maintain the same bonds as in all capitalist corporations. The growth imperative has indeed shifted from profit towards rent, but it remains just the same imperative. All big tech companies are driven by the same philosophy, grow or perish. Reality check number three is that capitalism itself is not very much about markets, or even less about free markets, because markets of various kinds have existed since antiquity. Even feudalism had its market. Capitalism has perfected a wide variety of markets, all of them regulated, uh, controlled, limited to some extent. Cloud platforms are still a kind of market that is entirely privately owned. However, I would call them simulacrum markets or metaphorical markets or algorithmic markets. Because they still want to appear like markets, they still want to appear that they preserve competition, regardless of how cloud capital is created for free by us, the cloud serves. Let's attempt some predictions. If we use this makeshift definition of capitalism, can we guess what other diseases capitalism can develop aside from techno-feudalism? New forms of capital, new forms of property rights, 
new forms of power, new forms of bonds between these elements. With techno-feudalism, capitalists have created a new form of capital, which we now call cloud capital, and a new form of power, which is to manipulate our behavior, and a new form of property, which is the unilateral dominion over our personal data much, much worse than owning the so-called means of production. What if AI becomes so powerful that the connections between the three elements will be completely automated and human input will be minimal? The connections could go haywire, platforms may crash, unwanted acquisitions may happen, cloud capital may expand into unfathomable areas such as taking complete control over our access to basic needs, from healthcare to education. Power may expand into 1984-like scenarios, when we will be told where we have to live, where we are allowed to travel, what we are allowed to eat. Functional democracy will wither away completely. Now let's talk degrowth. How can degrowth fight back against techno-feudalism? Remember, with degrowth, we are looking to decrease our material footprint on the environment because we as a society have overshot the limits of Earth. Taxing capitalists may not be enough or may not even work because with their last dying breath, capitalists would still try to find a loophole to stash some cash away in some fiscal paradise. We need to take away their power and dismantle their ownership over cloud capital. The growth machine also needs to be phased out if we want to avoid extinction. If degrowth breaks the bonds between property, power, capital and growth, then not only we will defeat techno-feudalism, but also the entire organism of capitalism. Varoufakis is correct when he proposes as a solution that all companies should be governed on a one worker equals one share equals one vote basis. This proposal will eliminate the alienating labor market and the asinine stock market. We could even drop the one share requirement if we want companies to have owners from outside, like in consumer cooperatives. Under degrowth, all companies must be democratic and all workers must have equal power to decide everything that happens inside the company, from what to produce, how to produce, who gets to be a manager and for how long. What can you do to resist techno-feudalism? Degrow your lifestyle and connect more with real humans, not digital avatars. Maybe don't post on Facebook and X and move to Discord, Mastodon or Blue Sky. Do not decide to consume anything based on recommendations from algorithms. This includes what to buy or what to watch on streaming platforms. Do not put your money into the stock market. If you want to start a business, make it a democratic cooperative on a one-worker, one-vote basis. Measure your material footprint from GHG emissions to how much stuff you buy and throw away. How much energy you consume with your entire lifestyle, not just at home but including traveling. And of course, take a hammer and smash Alexa and Google Home or even better, pick them apart and rebuild them into something actually useful that does not harvest data from you. Rediscover the joy and mesmerizing benefits of analog happiness together with other real humans. And when the actual revolution starts and breaks the bonds of the organism, show up at the revolution near you and show solidarity with your fellow suffering humans. That easy. Has techno-feudalism killed capitalism? No, not yet. Can it kill capitalism? Probably yes, if it continues on this trend. How can we defeat both capitalism and its symptoms? With degrowth. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think I am too picky with the notion of techno-feudalism? How do you think we can reverse this mess? What do you do to fight the system? Please click the button, smash the algo, support me if you can. See you in the next video.